verses 6 and 7. And I saw another angel flying through the sky, carrying the eternal good news to proclaim to the people who belong to this world, to every nation, tribe, language and people, Fear God, he shouted. Give glory to him, for the time has come when he will sit as judge. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all the springs of water. And that's from the New Living Translation. Now we're coming to the end of the time of the Great Tribulation. Behind us are the seven seals, six of the seven trumpets, and we're just getting into the implications of the last trumpet. And just as John is gripped by the wonder of the heavenly choir and the 144,000 God followers on earth who are there with Jesus on the Mount of Olives singing the new song, his vision is distracted by the first of three flying angels. This one has a proclamation and he wastes no time in making sure that all the inhabitants of the earth hear what he has to say. Don't forget that the people living on earth include all who are marked with that 666 reference on their hands or their foreheads. In spite of all the problems and natural disasters, they still haven't repented and turned to God. The angel's proclamation is the gospel, the good news about Jesus and his kingdom. He shouts the message out. The people must fear God, he says. They must acknowledge his presence and truth. They must worship him, the creator God. But ominously, the angel warns those in the world that it's judgment time. Our gracious God, even in this eleventh hour, still gives time for mankind to repent. Now imagine a scene. You are going about your daily business, but something in the sky grabs your attention. You look up, rub your eyes to make sure, and watch in amazement as an angel flies overhead, shouting out his message. You hear it in your native language, but the Asian family down the road, they hear it in their language as well, simultaneously. In fact, regardless of what the people's native tongue is, everyone will hear the message loud and clear. No one will have an excuse when they come to stand before God to say they didn't hear the gospel or understand the language of the angel. They won't even be able to to claim that the accent was indecipherable. Now how big will the angel be? Rest assured, he will be large enough for us all to see him well. We won't miss him, trust me. In many ways, this is a catch-all. Up until now, God's holy people, Christians everywhere, have gone to great lengths to share their faith, their messages of hope, the gospel message of the good news about Jesus and what he has done for us. As part of that, look at the extraordinary effort that has been put into translating the Bible. According to Wikipedia, as of September 2020, the full Bible has been translated into 704 languages, with the New Testament into a further 1,551. And with the other portions, that have been translated. The total is up to 3,415 languages. And over the centuries, missionaries have crisscrossed the globe with the gospel message. But just in case an obscure people somewhere has failed to hear the message, or the people need a reminder, the first of the three angels will make sure they hear it. But we know that God wants everyone to repent and turn to him. The Apostle Peter recorded in 2 Peter 3.9, The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But we have a choice. God isn't going to twist anyone's arm. We can choose a broad way that leads to destruction, 
or the narrow way that leads to eternal life. So if anyone is watching this video today and they haven't yet made a decision for Christ, I invite you, even plead with you, to make the right choice right now. Before you forget, don't put it off. We don't know when the day of judgment will arrive, but it will be too late if you leave the decision until then. Remember, the default choice is the wrong choice. The judgment day will be a terrible time, a time when the enormity of having made the wrong decision suddenly gets home as you are directed towards a door which opens into a place where you don't want to go. And there's no way back. God has said so.